All right, let's get started. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Student Alumni Association moving to the city New York City event. This event is hosted by the Student Alumni Association. My name is Dmitry Vlasov from the class of 2019. I'm the Alumni Relations Coordinator for SAA, and I will be your moderator for tonight. So welcome to this event. As you can see, this event is done online via a platform called Zoom that features a chat box below for you to post questions for our three panelists at the end of the event. The video chat will only be turned on for myself and the three panelists, while viewers will remain anonymous. We do ask that you post your questions throughout the event so that we can be prepared to answer them when the event closes in terms of me asking my questions. The event format, so the format of tonight's event, will be 45 minutes of questions created by members of the Student Alumni Association and 15 minutes of questions from you, the viewers. As mentioned, your questions can be posted in the chat box below. If you would like to follow up with our three panelists after the event, their emails will be provided in the email following this event. So now we're gonna introduce our three panelists. Joining us tonight, we have three panelists from New York City. Now, now I will hand it off to our panelists to introduce themselves, their class year, major, and where they live. So the first up is Paul Luger. Paul Luger. Welcome everyone, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, so I'm operations and management, um, and a minor in economics, and I, in, from 1997, a long time ago. And I live in West Harlem. On, uh, in Manhattan. Uh, Crystal? Okay. Um, hi, my name is Crystal. Um, I graduated in 2013. Um, I was a political science major and a, a psychology minor, and currently I live in Crown Heights, uh, Brooklyn. Great. And Bianca? Hi, everyone. My name is Bianca. Sorry, it's a little loud. I'm at the airport. Um, I studied design thinking in science and technology under the BDIC program, and I graduated in 2016, and I live in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Great. So now we'll get to um, asking questions. So we'll start off with the first category, which is why you moved. So uh, we know um, a big thing of learning about the three of you is first off, why you moved to the New York City area and how you even got there. So, uh, Crystal, we'll start with you. What, what made you choose to live in the greater New York City area? Yeah, um, so I always wanted to live in a city um, after college. I, uh, I just thought it'd be a great learning experience to have. Um, I chose New York because of the energy. I love the energy of the city. Um, also the culture, it's just a metropolis of different cultures and diversity. Um, and the endless amount of opportunities that the city offers. Um, yeah, pretty much all three. <laughs> Great. And uh, Paul, how about yourself? Um, yeah, so I've, I've worked in Philadelphia. I've worked in Boston. I've worked in San Diego. So I was really looking for a big city with lots of opportunities. Um, and I actually got to New York uh, via San Diego and Oakland, California, which is in the Bay Area right across from San Francisco. And I was actually hired by a company to, uh, as a technical project manager. And nobody, everyone in California loves California, wants to stay there. So they really had trouble getting people on the East Coast. And I was the opposite. I was uh, living in San Diego and I really wanted to get back to uh, the East Coast. So they hired me and said, you're our second hire in um, the East Coast, uh, you know, set up, uh, set up your home office in, uh, in New York City. And, uh, and I did that, and it's been absolutely tremendous. Great, great to hear. And Bianca? So I actually wanted to live in Boston because everyone, all of my friends moved to Boston, and I'm from Indonesia, so I had built a foundation at UMass and wanted to be close to everyone, but um, I had a job opportunity out in New York City, and I thought, you know what, why not? Um, it's an awesome city, and I don't regret it. Great. So we're going to move to housing. I know a big thing um, a lot of students are considering when moving to a new city is finding their first apartment and the process. Uh, so Bianca, we'll go back to you. So how did you find your first apartment and what type of documents are needed to start the process and what should you look for in an apartment tour? 
Sure. So funny enough, um, I actually worked for another UMass alum named Sarah Hill, and she has a company called Perfect Strangers of New York City. And her whole, her entire company is about mat roommate matchmaking in New York City. So I got a little bit lucky um, with the fact that I worked for a real estate company and she found my apartment. Um, but to skip over that, I mean, there's so many options online that you can look at. And in terms of documents, um, they ask for like guarantors, they ask for 40 times the rent. Um, a guarantor is someone that is going to sign the lease for you. And um, whether that be a parent or, um, you know, someone, a guardian. And yep. then, and then, yeah, they ask, there's a lot of documents that you need in order to move to New York City, especially as a first time, uh, especially if you're graduating and it's your first time like getting a job out here. But uh, with that said, there's so many options out there um, and opportunities for you to make it work. Yeah, I agree. I think New York City has a lot of diverse opportunities uh, for pe for anyone, uh, whatever job they're doing in New York City, to find an apartment that suits their best interests. Uh, so, Crystal, how did you go about finding your first apartment? What do you th what type of documents were needed to start the process? And do you th should is there anything you should look for on an apartment tour? Uh, I'm glad you asked that because I actually do work in real estate. Um, and Great. if anybody's looking for advice on moving, um, they could definitely email me just give you everything you need I have a bunch of documents um, but I would for most students um, probably you're gonna need a guarantor um, so a guarantor would probably be like a parent that can co-sign an apartment for you because you basically right out of college you have no uh, income and uh, you have no credit um, if you do that's great um, if you uh, you know if you found a job and they can guarantee that you're going to make a certain amount, that definitely helps. Um, uh, the, a good way to bypass it is if you just find roommates um, that just, you know, they're looking for a third roommate and, you know, they don't need all that documentation. Um, that, but there are other, uh, other things that you could do, um, like Bianca said, roommate matching, where you can just look for a room. Um, you would need those documents. Um, trying to think what else you should look for. Probably if you're looking to move by yourself um, into an established apartment with roommates, you definitely want to see if you have a lot in common with those roommates. Um, you want to make sure that you know you're compatible because that's a big thing <laughs> um, with roommate matching, uh, being compatible. Um, you're everything from neatness to when you wake up to how you use the common areas that's very important um yeah there's just a lot so if anybody wants to email me um in the interest of time i don't want to go too too much um but they can email me and i can send them documents if they need it awesome yeah i definitely recommend for people to reach out to you a lot of great information from, from both of you paul i'll hand it off to you um oh, let's hear about how you found your first apartment yeah, so I was <clears throat> I was traveling all the time, uh, all over the U.S. and Canada. So I didn't have a lot of time. So I got a referral to a real estate agent, and I recommend that everyone gets a referral from someone they know, UMass alumni, whatever, to get that in because there's twenty two thousand real estate agents in Manhattan, and I don't know twenty good ones. You know, it really it really depends. So I paid a fifteen percent fee. Um, and I, but I, I needed, I wanted something good and, and, um, and I got the best place ever. For, I lived there two years, but I wanted to kind of explain it real quick is, um, fee and no fee. So no fee equals fee. And, and what I mean by that is the fees baked in and the fees are 15%. Sometimes they knock it to 12, sometimes they knock it down to 8%, which would be one month, 8.33. Um, but if you live there a year and you have a no fee apartment, you did a great job. If you live there two years, your usually your rent is more per month. So you really kind of want to be open to a fee if, if you can. But the most important thing is, is Amherst and Boston abolished rent control and rent stabilization a long time ago. New York City and San Francisco, it's very much in force. And because of this, it's very hard to get an apartment for anybody. 
Um, because if you move in and you don't pay rent, you can live there for over a year for free. Now, then you go on a blacklist that marks you that you're not going to, uh, <laughs> you've not paid your landlord and nobody in the city will rent to you because they always pull that up after your credit check. So because it's so hard to evict people, the process of getting an apartment is, and I have a list here, it's, it's you know, 20 documents, pay stubs, credit, you know, social security, previous resident history, previous landlord reference letter, reference letter from your employer, all these things. So what I recommend that if you're starting out, you know, the uh, roommate service, roomie.com, something like that is great. And then you can work your way up. Uh, you know, if you really want an apartment, you can do it with certain landlords with a guarantor. Um, but it's all depends. Yeah. It all depends. So whether you get an apartment or not, it depends. So don't get too excited what you see online because you may not be able to ever get that apartment even 10 years later because you don't qualify because it's so, so stringent. So just be aware it's, it's the rent control, rent stabilization, the city policies, which, which make it challenging for anyone that wants to come in. Hey, I just want in Boston, super easy. Yeah, I definitely recommend, definitely reach out to Paul if you have more questions about anything that he shared. Um, definitely a valuable resource to know that um, and for moving forward when finding an apartment. So um, we'll move on to the next question. So uh, Bianca, what type of housing budget should I expect when moving to New York City? Um, and what other expenses? Sure. Um, so for a housing budget, um, I would say to prepare between 800 to 1,500 a month, depend, like that's kind of average, maybe living in like Brooklyn. Uh, I live in Williamsburg right now. Maybe Washington Heights, you could get that price, which is um, upper, it's on the west side, um, close to uh, Harlem. And yeah, I would, I, would, I would say around that, and that's a shared space. So that's probably like a two or three bedroom with someone and if you want your own studio I would prepare a thousand seven hundred plus and a thousand seven hundred is pretty cheap for a studio so that's somewhere maybe like in the Bronx or maybe deeper in Brooklyn um but I mean if if, if Paul or Crystal if you know any better prices I'd love to know myself but that's that's what I've found historically yeah yeah so Crystal you can take it you can take it away yeah absolutely I think Bianca is definitely on the nose with that um it all depends on where you want to live. Um, Manhattan, a typical one-bedroom apartment um, average is about 3,200. Um, if you're obviously looking to share, depending on how many rooms, so it goes down in price. But more than likely, you're going to be paying over 1,000, even if whoever you're sharing the apartment with. Um, in Brooklyn, it could be anywhere for uh, one bedroom from... 17 I would say to God knows if you're looking for a luxury apartment maybe 5,000 6,000 for a one bedroom mm -hmm. um, it all depends on where you're living um, what you're looking for uh, uh, it definitely if you're looking for Manhattan it definitely is a lot cheaper on the east side than it is on the west side um, in Manhattan obviously Harlem and uh, Washington Heights are a lot cheaper um, I would say the Bronx is definitely the cheapest place to find an apartment um, in New York City. Um, but if you're young, most people uh, would prefer Brooklyn um, just because that's where most um, of the young people live, uh, either probably in Brooklyn or Harlem, I'm thinking now. Um, but yeah, the prices are all over the place. It's just, it honestly depends on your budget if you're looking for roommates how many bedrooms and you definitely have to manage your expectations um, because you're in New York City your bedroom isn't going to be your bedroom in Massachusetts uh, just definitely be just know that you're going to be surprised um, what your money will get you in Massachusetts it's not what you're going to get um, in New York City especially Manhattan. 
Brooklyn is a little bit better, but it's definitely getting up there. Um, Williamsburg, Williamsburg is definitely um, on the more expensive side. Park Slope, if you're looking for Brooklyn, um, uh, Brooklyn Heights on the expensive side. The least expensive side, I would say definitely deeper in Brooklyn. Um, Queens is actually pretty, it's up and coming. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Astoria is pretty good. Um, it's very close to the city, Long Island City. You can get into the city within like 20 minutes, which is very good for New York City. Um, so yeah, it ranges in price. And if you want to contact me, I'll definitely help you with, uh, with your apartment search. Because um, like Paul said, you definitely want to work with a real estate agent because the whole process, I kid you not, is very, very tedious. Um, there's just a lot of factors. And uh, working with one person who knows the city is, is in your best interest. Um, it's definitely worth paying a fee. Um, because it will cut down on the frustration. I definitely agree with that. I think really working with a realtor will help, especially with New York City. There's so many different areas to live in, so many different price points, so many different factors to consider for students. So I definitely agree with you on that. And Paul, I'll hand it off to you now. Uh, yeah, no, Crystal touched on a lot of the, the points. Um, generally speaking, about $1,200 a month for a room, almost anywhere in New York is, is about average. And then, you know, she named the prices pretty, pretty accurately for everything else. If you're young, I do recommend Brooklyn. That is the fun scene. That is where the young people are. Uh, I, I highly recommend that. But it is more expensive than many parts of Manhattan, which is kind of surprising. Um, and I'm, I'm up in West Harlem, and, and the whole West Village kind of moved there. So it's, it's very nice, um, but you, you kind of want to walk around and, and, and see what you prefer. Um, but the other th aspect, which is uh, some people can do it, some people cannot, is you know if you really have a, a parent or somebody, you know you, you could consider buying a place, uh, you know, and that would be depending on budget, uh, because sometimes that's the long play. Um, because unless you're in a rent stabilized apartment, your rent's going up every month. I mean every year to to a good amount. So you can't get too comfortable. Um, in a in a in a market rate apartment, um, but up in West Harlem, there's plenty of rent stabilized, um, which are nice places. And the city every year says a percentage it will go up, could be one percent, and then that's all it goes up. So that gives you a little bit more longevity. Um, but yeah, you need to definitely go with someone with knowledge, um, and have all your documents in the cloud or on a chip. And if you go looking, you have to be prepared to take it if you want. And I always say to people, take as much time as you want to decide, but when you decide, zero to 100, because you'll lose the apartment. It'll be gone to somebody else. Um, but anyway, yeah, so it's, but the other interesting thing is, to me, it's New York City is so unique and it's so safe now that you really can live almost anywhere and enjoy it. And the other thing, I, I went into a lot of people that, oh, I'll go further south, I'll go further south. Um, if you're looking for a budget, you have to start basically at the top of Central Park, which is 110, and go north. Uh, anything further south, generally speaking, is way more expensive until you go into Brooklyn. Yes. Um, so just, just to put it out there. Yep. So in the interest of time, we're going to move on to the next question for the housing category. Uh, Bianca, um, so do you have any websites or resources you'd recommend to find affordable housing? Where should, where should somebody start? If they're just looking to browse online or just and figure out a general idea before they start talking to a realtor, wh what do you recommend for websites or resources to use? Sure. Um, so I would recommend Perfect Changes of New York City. I think it's like a really great website and Sarah Hill did a really great job um, grabbing like um, affordable housing and, and surfacing it on her website. I would also recommend uh, Street Easy, but with Street Easy, you kind of have to play around with the filters. Um, and then, you know, I would also recommend, um, I'm blanking, Nooklin. Nooklin is really awesome. Uh, if you're looking to specifically live in Brooklyn, I really like their website. Um, and also, like, you can talk to other roommates at the same time and see who's liked what and it's a whole community um and they have a lot of no fee listing uh no fee apartments as well great and uh crystal 
Um, well, I am a real estate agent, so um, yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yep. So um, I definitely uh, we have our own inventory. We work with developers, and so we know. I I work mostly in Brooklyn now. I used to work um, in Manhattan, so I pretty knowledgeable about what's on the market at any given point. Um, but um, websites, I would say um, most agents work with uh, with Naked Apartments, Street Easy, uh, Rent Hop. Um, I mean, there, there's just a lot, um, and there's a lot more popping up everywhere. Um, but I would say for the most part, the most popular would probably be Street Easy, um, and naked apartments. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And Paul, do you have anything to add to that for websites or resources you really yeah, recommend? So it's, it's pretty, it's pretty unique to New York. Uh, Zillow is the parent company that, that does naked apartments and does street easy. So they all work together, but generally speaking, if you want to do research online, street easy is definitely the way to go. Uh, but, and those are exclusive listings, meaning people that, list on that have to pay x amount four dollars a day for the listing so they so it's a lot more real uh and a tangible but keep in mind that if i'm a real estate agent which i am uh i have 10 units i might only list a couple on street easy so it's good to reach out to agents speak with them because they might have five more they're just not advertising but street easy in general is, is a great reference to see what's out there, what the price points are. But as I said earlier, whether you can actually get the apartment, that's what you need the agent for to find out, you know, what, what the landlord is looking for and, and if you even have a chance. Got it. Well, thanks so much, um, the three of you, for answering that. So we're going to move on to the spending category. I think this is really important, especially living in New York City. Um, everything is expensive, ranging from food to owning a car. Um, so other than budgeting for um, a big thing, which is like we discussed, um, having an apartment, um, Paul, what does your budget look like? Are there any fees you didn't expect initially when living in the city? Uh, well, I mean, there's definitely a lot more taxes than, <laughs> than I would expect. You know, there, there's 8.87% sales tax on anything, you know, even like a can of soda. Uh, 3.078 to 3.876 city wage tax. Then you have the state of New York tax at about four, and then you have the federal tax. So definitely enjoy taxes and be prepared to have extra money set aside uh, for that. Um, you know, really, you want to have some money saved up and a, and a good job. Um, but on the bright side, unlike Boston, um, there's a lot more diversity in things you can buy. There's street vendors, there's things that are, you know, there's happy hours, things that are not legal in Massachusetts are legal here. So it actually was cheaper for me without a car to live in New York City than to live in Boston. So it really depends on what your choices are, but you have a ton of choices. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's all about how you budget your money and what you choose is most important to you because then you'll be able to make it work, you know? So uh, Bianca, how, what does your budget look like? Um, how, what would you recommend um, for fees for students to expect? Sure, so um, I would definitely set aside 100, I think, yeah, it's $110 for the unlimited Metro card a month um, if your employer doesn't pay for it. So I would set aside that for sure, just to get around. Um, and then in terms of food, I would say, I mean, I, I go grocery shopping at Trader Joe's, so I would probably say I spend like maybe $50 a week on groceries, and that's if I'm being really disciplined and I'm actually cooking at home, but I would say like a night out with my friends, I probably spend like 15 to $20 for a meal, and I don't drink, so I save a lot of money, but if you do drink, drinks are probably like 10 to $15 a drink as well. So um, you should also take that into consideration. Yeah, I agree. It's all about um, watching your spending and having everything in proportions. And Crystal, I'll hand it off to you. Um, well, I, <laughs> New York is, um, it's generally very expensive to live here, but it's manageable. 
Um, I do shop at Trader Joe's just like Bianca does too. So um, I definitely recommend Trader Joe's because it's actually a lot cheaper to shop at Trader Joe's um, than a lot of the grocery stores here and it has way better quality food. Um, I guess uh, your rent is probably the most um, important thing. So you definitely want to be mindful of that. Um, I would say definitely um, if you're looking to um, budget, uh, look into maybe uh, cooking at home because that's like a huge uh, money waster. <laughs> um, I, I've been in and out of like cooking uh, and definitely do you do save a lot of money um, uh, if you do prepare your food at home. Uh, my old employer provided lunch, so we did, I didn't need to do that. Um, but uh, definitely look at your budget, definitely look at what you need um, uh, for the week. Um, and yeah, see, see how it measures with your overall savings. Um, that's basically the only thing I would really recommend. Um, having a car, I would definitely not recommend having a car in New York City, um, unless you live really, really on the outer boroughs of New York city like probably deep Brooklyn or Queens or the Bronx um, doesn't make sense to um, yeah just definitely budgeting because it does get expensive especially if you go out to eat a lot um, and definitely drinks are very expensive I do drink and I do go out to eat a lot with friends so you definitely want to be mindful of that because it definitely does eat up a lot of your budget Great. Yeah. So I think a common theme we're getting is definitely budgeting correctly, putting everything into proportion because the city is very expensive. And Crystal brought up um, the car situation. So that's going to go into our next category, which is transportation. Uh, so Bianca, what type of transportation do you use in the city? Uh, so what are the benefits of having a car versus using public transportation? So I don't have a car. I use the subway. Um, and like I said before, it's like $110 for the unlimited card. Um, for a whole month and uh, if I'm being lazy especially when it's cold sometimes I take an uber but uber pools I mean yeah you can take uber pool which will save you a lot of money but they just recently put a tax I think they raised the prices of the taxi services in New York City so it's a little bit more expensive now but the transportation system's awesome it's 24 hours I could take a subway at like 3 a.m. and still it feels like it's during the daytime just because there's always people on the subway. Yeah. And uh, Paul? Um, yeah, I mean, don't have a car unless you have to. That It's it's a nightmare. Every aspect of, of it is from, from parking to insurance to everything. So if you can avoid that, and if you have to have one, you just keep it as far away as, as, as possible. Um, subway, obviously. The bus system is amazing, and you use it a lot east to west if you're crossing the city. Uh, they run all the time. They're brand new buses. They have some of them have the the ports to charge your cell phone. Um, so I ended up actually doing a lot of cross town buses and a lot of subway. I hardly ever take Uber and Lyft, and there's not a big fan. And a lot of those drivers they don't know the city. So if I have to do that, I, I actually go old school with a cab. Um, but then otherwise, I'm on city bikes, and it's I think it's two hundred dollars. It's a little pricey. Two hundred dollars a year, and you have a little chip. And you just poke it in the in the machine, and you get uh, 45 minutes free. Uh, and you just go, they're everywhere in the city, Brooklyn, Newark, all over the place. And so I end up doing. And there's bike paths when you get to know the city. It's it's pretty safe when you know the cities where you're going um, on the bike paths. So I end up doing a lot of city bikes, you know. And then you get to really know the city because you learn it from the subway, and then you learn it from the street, and then you know, then you really are, are good to go and you can suddenly be, you know, across town in 12 minutes. I, I definitely, I've noticed a lot of the city bikes popping up um, both internationally when I was personally abroad and I've seen them in multiple cities uh, here in New England. Um, and I definitely recommend for that to be utilized. I think that'd be great in New, in New York, especially if you know, if you know the area and you know the paths, I think that can get you somewhere very efficiently and cheap. Um, so Crystal, I'll hand it off to you. Yeah, um, I think, uh, well, where Paul is, it does, I think that buses are actually a really great resource um, and city bikes too, because it's very um, much in the city. Um, I don't know if that really makes sense for Brooklyn because 
Brooklyn is just really big and um, it's it's harder to use city bike to get from one end of Brooklyn to the other because it's just so it's a lot more spaced out. Um, so for me personally, I uh, I use the subway and Ubers <laughs> because uh, it's uh, generally like the best way for me to get around. Um, <coughs> and, uh, I would say during the during the mornings, I would say use Uber or well use the subway, and then at night probably take a. Uh, a ride chair or a cab because the subways don't run as well at night. Um, they run very infrequently, maybe like 20 minutes apart. So if you miss it, you're just waiting for another 20 minutes. Um, so that's what I usually do. Awesome. Yeah. So definitely, definitely all those different transport, there's so many different transportation modes, you know, and I think that everybody with what they're looking for can find something that serves their needs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when moving to the city of New York, you know, um, you're going to a brand new city, you're going there for your first time, either by yourself or with a, a roommate, who knows. So what's the social scene like like in New York City, Paul? Um, what are some ways of creating a new social scene for yourself? Um, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a tough one. So I call it the loneliest city in the world sometimes, which is funny because there's over 8 million people. Uh, you can, I mean, the best scene could be two doors next to you. So you really have to build your own scene. Uh, and, I, and I found meetups, anything you want from things you're interested in to, to, you know, sales and marketing, whatever, real estate, whatever you're interested in, get in involved with, with the meetups, um, the city, uh, I mean, the alumni group now is, is pretty active and excellent resource in Manhattan now. And then you get to meet a lot of people and network through there. Um, but you really have to kind of, oh, and then people you work with and after work and, if you do drink, the happy hour scene, you know, is where people go and for the best one. And, and it can be surprisingly inexpensive. So you, you meet a lot of a lot of people through that. But um, I've really found that, you know, you you have to really kind of work at it. And then once you get it, it's it's amazing. Great. And Crystal? Uh, your, your mic is muted, Crystal. Oh, sorry. There we go. It's okay. <laughs> Um, so yeah, Paul is definitely very right, because I, I moved to New York, um, I didn't really have a great network here, so definitely um, moving by yourself to the city can get very jarring, because even though there's a lot of people, it's, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things, and a lot of people are very distracted, so it does, it, it does take time um, to build your network, um, like you said, uh, meetups uh, is a platform that can help. Um, but uh, I mean, you really just have to be out there. You have to go out there and you have to um, basically put yourself out there and network um, and just get to know the city. Uh, I think uh, your coworkers are probably gonna be your, like your, your first networking group. Um, for me, I met a lot of my friends through uh, my coworkers and so on and so forth. I'm just going out and just, um, yeah, just making connections. Um, if you're, it depends what you're looking to do in New York City, because you know, you can do basically anything. It's a city that never sleeps, literally. Um, if, you're, if you're really into the club scene, uh, I definitely recommend looking at promoters, because they are always looking to get people in clubs for free. So that's definitely a good resource. I'm looking to just partner up with some promoters, because you know, who wouldn't want to get a drink for free? Um, if you're not really into clubbing or anything like that, um, definitely social clubs are available. Um, I'm part of a few. Uh, I can definitely um, link people to them if they email me. Um, I, I'm part of a book club. I um, am part of a, an organizer's club. I organize events around the city. Um, so if you, you know, if you're in the city and you're looking for stuff to do and need help finding stuff, just let me know and I'll um, awesome. see if I can connect you. Great. Thank you. And Bianca? Um, so New York is like, yes, it's like, it feels like the loneliest city in the world. But at the same time, like you have so much opportunity to meet people like everywhere. Most of the friends, like I said before, most of my friends moved to Boston. But funny enough, a lot of my best friends in New York right now are from UMass. Um, because I went to like the UMass networking events or Instagram 
which is like a really great source to like find friends um especially like especially if you want to explore the city together and go to you know brunch or dinner check out museums and stuff like that and then also like dating apps <laughs> which is like a really honestly that's how I like established my like time in New York in the beginning because you really get to discover the city and you also end up kind of just being friends with everyone I don't know if that's my own personal experience but like um that's kind of how I was able to make friends um and also Bumble has this thing called like Bumble BFF which is um like a dating app but for friends and then they also have Bumble for business which is like a networking dating app um like a LinkedIn thing but yeah no there's like a lot of different ways that you can make friends here and as much as people think that New Yorkers are like tough on the outside I actually think like the reason why I love New York so much is because everyone's kind of like there for each other even though you know if you get if you smile at someone on the train someone might be suspicious about it but um yeah I mean there's like a lot of ways but yeah there's a lot of UMass people now in New York and I think that's like a great place to start yeah, that's awesome. I definitely think it's all about the resources you use that the city has to offer. Like Crystal m mentioned, there's promoters. If you're interested in clubs, use that resource, for example, to save yourself some money, especially in the city of New York. It's really uh, expensive. And like Bianca just ended off um, with, there's lots of apps to take advantage of. So definitely use your resources wisely and to your advantage when moving to a new city. So we'll go on um, to um, another question in regards to social scene. So um, Paul, what are some good places to eat? Um, what are some fun things to do in the city of New York? All right. Well, so the one of the resources that I really like, it's timeout.com, www.timeout.com. And they have a little magazine they throw around you can pick up. And that has, actually, you can go on the website. Stuff's in there, too. It has kind of the new restaurants, the new scene, and it has this kind of dating thing in the back, which is fun. And it, they go to a restaurant and you can go there, you know, too, if, if you like it. Um, but it has a lot of free things to do and almost free things to do. Um, so I kind of pick around that and, and I like to do pho and I like to go do ramen and I found all those places. That's what I like. Um, uh, but then, you know, I really enjoy going to Coney Island and there's some Russian places with pierogies that are just unbelievable. And it's, uh, you know, you can walk the boardwalk and things like that. So it really depends what you're looking for. But that timeout is a great resource when you're planning your weekend and what you want to do. You're like, because a lot of the city on some weekends, there's five, six blocks closed. They're having festivities. You wouldn't even know about it. And when you go there, it's, it, it's really fun and, and people are always in a good mood. And, and, and I've, I've done a lot of those kind of street fairs too. Um, but that, that is the, the reference for that. And, and you know, just gotta, gotta get out there. Awesome, and Crystal? Yeah, I, I would say a few of my favorite restaurants would have to be um, uh, Verlaine. Um, it's basically like Asian fusion with happy hour from five, p.m. to 10 p.m. every day. So definitely check that out. I love the place. Um, I guess another one would probably be La Souk. It's uh, like a party brunch um, during the weekends. It's really fun, a lot of music, people dancing. It's like a fun time. Um, and I would say maybe this place called uh, Vintage 61. It's like a sports club, um, but it's, very low key. Um, it's um, around the Seaport area um, near uh, Wall Street. It's very quiet during the weekends and it's a great place to have brunch. Um, like Paul said, I definitely recommend doing your research. Time and Out is a great resource just to see what's happening around the city because there's always something happening. Um, there's just so much happening. It's, it does pay to do your research. Um, I recommend uh, using social discovery apps like um, uh, Eventbrite. Um, my new favorite social discovery um, app is called Pulse. I just discovered it. It's actually amazing. It gives you like like everything that's happening around the city for at a discount price, um, and you can have brunches for like thirty five dollars with two people. Like that's unheard of. Um, it's like two hours unlimited mimosas and everything you can imagine. 
Um, but yeah, just doing your research. Um, go find pretty much anything you want to do. Yeah, I agree. And that really like reiterates the point I've, I've made and I, the point that you've all made, you know, you got to use your resources wisely. If you want to save money, you got to do your research, you got to dig. And then that's going to really pay, pay dividends in the future, especially if you're on a tight budget when you're a student moving there, moving to New York for the first time. So, uh, Bianca, what are some good places to eat? What would you recommend? Oh, my God. Okay. I am such a foodie. I like there is so many restaurants in New York City. Uh -huh. um, if you really want to know, like my list and stuff, like, please, like Instagram, I guess I can share Dimitri, I can share my Instagram handle. I will literally send you guys like endless recommendations. Perfect. Yeah, we can send it out in the in the email when we send it out to the people that are watching. Okay. But you did you did mute yourself again. Do you want to? Oh, sorry. Do you wanna, do, would you recommend a couple right now? Um. Okay. Uh. Top top. This is. Top, <laughs> top two favorites. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. Top favorites. Okay. Levain Bakery. Like, if you guys love cookies, I have such a big sweet tooth. Um, dough, which is like a cookie dough place that they serve it like ice cream. Um, and then Taiyaki. So as you can tell, all my recommendations are like uh, ice cream slash dessert slash cookie places. But um, for food, I really like, um, recently I went to this place called Cafe Medi. It's Mediterranean food, super cute, super Instagrammable. Um, that's, yeah, I would recommend those. Awesome. Love to hear it. So we'll go into our final question uh, for tonight's event before we go to answer the questions from the viewers. So the three of you, of course, bring a lot of knowledge to us and we're very thankful to have you here. And we're gonna go to our last category, which is advice. So Crystal, we'll start off with you. What advice would you share for a recent graduate moving to the city of New York? Um, just be excited. You're in the city and you're young. This is like the best place to be um, right after school and you're just exploring what you want to do and just, you're living your life. Um, but, uh, yeah, just be excited and um, definitely budget because even though there's so much to do, it's, yeah, it's expensive and it, New York is famous for people just, you know, going out and never saving and you don't want to be in that um, path, you want to definitely budget your finances because, um, yeah, when you're having fun, you're not really thinking about um, how you're spending your money and it, add, it does add up. So, yeah, those are my recommendations. Great. Awesome. And Bianca? Um, yeah, I, my advice would be to be open, be excited, um, really take time to explore the city. A lot of the times I find out that local New Yorkers actually don't take time to see the city. And so um, I guess just don't dwell, don't get jaded. Um, yeah, just enjoy it and, and have fun and, um, and don't spend all your money in one place. Awesome, and Paul? Yeah, I was gonna uh, piggyback on that. Um, don't get jaded part is you, you wanna have everything in order you know, everything on a flash drive in the cloud, kind of figure out what you want um, and then just go for it. But I think what's important is a lot of people are jealous. And what I've found, what I do is I just agree with it. So they say, you have a really small apartment, you say yes. You say it's dirty, you say yes. You don't have a dishwasher. Just agree and just move on. And meanwhile, you have a dishwasher, you have a great apartment, it's super clean. But you just can't let people that, you know, you know, haters want to hate. So I really say, you know, you can have the most incredible time, budget, plan out, do it. Only listen to people that have done it or lived there or have lived there. Things like that you want to listen to. But yeah, don't listen to people that, that are negative. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for answering those questions. Now we're going to move on to answering the questions of the people that are watching. Um, so Paul, the first one's for you. It's specifically for, for you. A viewer asked us, um, what do you prefer, West Coast or East Coast? Oh, man. Okay. So I guess that's kind of like what you prefer in life. So West Coast is very laid back. You get your cup of coffee. You're kind of up and running at 11 o'clock in the morning, which is, which is 1, 11 to 1 uh, in the East Coast time. Um, so if you like to kind of lay back, uh, <laughs> but it's very expensive. So I prefer the East Coast because I like people being straightforward. I like the fast pace. I like the options. You know, you, you can live 
you know, in the Bronx in a great place that's relatively affordable. So I like the options in New York. I like the feel of the East Coast, but man, I like the weather on the West Coast. That is for sure. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I wish we had that weather year round. Um, so now we have a question just for the three of you. Um, you all three of you can answer. One of you can answer whoever feels that they want to share. So what's your favorite place in the city? It could be anything, visiting a monument, um, place to go for a walk, place to eat, any, it could be anything. So whoever wants to go can go for it. Um, I can go. I really love the Metropolitan Museum of Art um, on the Upper East Side. It's really pretty. Um, you can pay what you want to get there. Don't get fooled by the $25 uh, suggested sure. donation. And you know, you can bring your laptop, there's Wi-Fi. Yeah, I really, that's one of my favorite spots. Awesome. Paul or Crystal? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, I, really, I have my own bike and I do city bike. What I really enjoy is you can get on um, right below <laughs> West Side Highway, there's Riverside Park, and you can ride your bike from uh, the tip of Manhattan all the way around to East 37th Street on a bike path. Then you kind of shoot up first, then you cut through Central Park, uh, and then you, you come out and you get a bite to eat. So I really like being on the move and really seeing what's going on, stopping, getting a bite to eat, bite to drink. Uh, drink. Um, but that loop around Manhattan, I mean, you, they have the little statue where they bought Manhattan from the Native Americans for shells. And then you come all the way around and you're looking at the Statue of Liberty and then you're going to the seaport just again. So I really like to be on, 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 the, on the bike path and going through the parks. Awesome. Crystal, do you have anything to add to that one? Um, I would say Roosevelt Island, because it just, it feels like you're in New York, but you're like not at the same time, because it's kind of like it's a small part of New York and like, yeah, I don't know, it's like surrounded by water. So it's, it's, it's so much cleaner than pretty much anywhere else in New York City. Um, but it's like kind of like removed. It's like you're in Manhattan, but then you're not in Manhattan. It's, it's weird, but you'd have to experience it. It's, that's my favorite um, part of New York. Awesome. So another question we got is, you know, New York City is, is one of the biggest cities in the U.S., let alone, I would imagine, the world. Um, and compared to the city of Boston, you know, um, how did you acclimate yourself to such an over, overwhelming place compared to most American cities? I can, is that for all of us? Yep. Yep. I mean, like, like we said earlier, you, you have to choose your housing wisely and you want to live in an area you want to live in and then you learn the city and then you can move elsewhere. So I recommend that really start off I mean, I started off on West 71st Street because that's the area I kind of knew. Lived there two years, then I went to Harlem. So things like that, uh, really where you start off is, is the most important thing. Awesome. Bianca or Crystal? Um, yeah, I would agree with Paul. Like definitely where you live is important because that's where you probably spend most of your time and you want to be comfortable. Um, I would start with, your, yeah, start with your neighborhood, explore your neighborhood, and then just, like, start slowly branching out because there's, the city's so big. Like, it's crazy when people ask me, like, oh, you live in Brooklyn, but, like, Brooklyn itself is massive. Uh, sometimes it takes me 45 minutes to get from one place to another in Brooklyn yeah. versus just, like, you know, going into Manhattan. So um, definitely start around and pick, pick your housing wisely. Got it. And Crystal? Um, I definitely recommend uh, social clubs. Um, that's how I got my got acclimated into the city and started to meet people. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of social clubs in New York City, and there are a bunch of um, websites that help you find them. Uh, if you email me, I'll be happy to share them with you. Um, and like Bianca and Paul said, uh, definitely housing because that. If you're young, um, definitely Brooklyn is where all the young people are. Um, so it's, it's really, you know, I guess a hub for a lot of young people, but also a story I think has got, gone pretty, um, pretty hip too. So uh, yeah, start off with your neighborhood, um, branch out, join a, a bunch of social clubs, and honestly just go out and explore the city. You can't 
can't stay home because if you do, you're never going to enjoy the city. It's going to be a very lonely experience. And once you once you have friends, like the city starts to feel really small. Yeah. So we'll go to our last question. Um, we just had a viewer post in. So if they asked, if I have a job lined up in Newark, uh, what is the best neighborhood there? Do you have any recommend recommendations for that area? I know it's a little bit outside the city of New York. Well, I mean, there there is Hoboken, which is is near, and then if not, you take the path across, um, and you can start looking. But it, but it's expensive. So if you're really in the Jersey side, Hoboken and Jersey City is actually where I would start looking, and then you can look out uh, because not only do you have to buy the pass for the path, which is from Jersey to New York, you also have to buy the pass for New York City. So now you have two passes, and so you really have to look look around wisely, and maybe starting off in Hoboken or Jersey City might be might be the best. Awesome, Bianca, Crystal, anything to add for that one? Um, that area. Yeah, uh, with New York, um, I know that it's getting it's it's getting really developed. So I don't really know about the different areas of New York, but definitely if you can live on the path line, definitely do that. Um, it would save you so much grief because the path goes into New York um, and depending on where you're working in the city, it could um, actually make sense um, because you might not have to buy uh, a New York uh, transit card if you are anywhere from Christopher Street to 33rd Street. I don't know all the um, different stops, um, but uh, definitely live on the path line because it will save you a lot of money, especially um, if uh, one of the stops um, equal your job location. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. And Bianca, do you have any recommendations for that area? Um, I don't know too much about Newark, yeah. but Hoboken is, is really awesome. Hoboken is a really nice um, area. Great. Awesome. So that concludes our questions. Uh, if you haven't done so already, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to hear the latest news about future SAA events. We thank you again for participating in tonight's event and look forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you to our three panelists for devoting their time to this event, and we hope to see you at, the fu at future UMass alumni events. It truly means the world to us. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.